What's up guys, I'm LS and welcome to Lawrence's Library, the weekly series where I sit with you guys and we go over a set from the most recent peak tournaments event. Today we have the Dollhouse, the Bayonetta, and Gayo, the hero, uh, from this week's most recent uh, peak tournaments event, Losers Finals, so it's a best of five set. And uh, I guess before we get into it, I like to look at the character choices on the stage before we do anything else. So looking at it, we've got Hero and Bayonetta, and in this most recent patch, actually, that dropped about a week or two ago, um, Bayonetta got buffed. Uh, side tilt reduced vulnerability, uh, up tilt increased attack speed, made it easier to hit multiple times, increased uh, attack range on the last attack, and better hit, uh, hit detection. Uh, side smash got buffed, uh, afterburner kick got buffed, up smash got buffed and then who cares about final smash but all those things good for uh bayonetta and then we look at hero and i think all they got was uh where is it where is it where is it a b h i i don't know where it is is it in like character order alphabetical oh, let's see here okay here we go down special made it easier to hit multiple times with kaboom uh, which is like the big one sucks you in so i guess with those things kind of on hand hero got like that one little thing that doesn't matter a whole lot but bayonetta got a lot of stuff boosted for her normals and afterburner kick so with this character kind of with the new buffs i'm curious as to how well this character is going to do in the 8.0 meta um of course looking at these two characters bayonetta you know a very solid character has been for a little while since she's not living up to her smash for her glory a lot of people kind of put her down as a like mid low tier character but maybe this new stuff might be what she needs to kind of uh, go up a few spots um hero a character at the beginning who people disliked as of rng but now we can understand has a pretty solid kit uh sword has a lot of knockback and strength uh, which makes up for it not having the most range as compared to a lot of other sword characters that are at the top of the meta um a lot of good zoning capabilities with stuff like frizz kafrizzle and um or Frizz, Frizzle, and Frizzle, and then Kazap, um, what is it, Zap, Zapple, and Kazap, the, uh, side special, um, going really far, not being a projectile, and having a low kind of commitment, a lot of this, I think, is gonna have to rely on Dalhouse's ability to break into, um, Geo's zoning with Hero, potentially through Afterburner Kick and some other stuff, but let's go ahead and get right into it. Round Battlefield, I think this is going to be good for Bayonetta's mobility with Afterburner Kick, and maybe Hero if he needs to platform camp. So let's just get going. There we go, we already see that Afterburner Kick kind of into play, we're going to see it for a lot of combo starters. something to kind of point out i like that um i like that geo is only opting to use you when he's kind of like in the corner like over like he didn't pop it out over here but when he was on the other side of the screen you know dollhouse doesn't approach and he has time to set up oomph and um get that bang out as they try to approach and then dollhouse opting to stay on the platform i don't know what they were actually like kind of looking for because we see them drop here and then geo covers that landing with the um with the run up up tilt so perhaps they were expecting like a jump on the platform uh from Gao, but instead pushing for the offense and kind of keeping their opponent at disadvantage above them a nice three up tilt's not going to extend any further after that though and then opting for the aerial afterburner kick um i guess trying to just get him on the head you're going to see that up the out of shield probably a lot um i think that's hero's best out of shield option actually Yeah, and there he is again, opting to save, uh, to just use that menu, only when he's in the corner. Okay, see, he had, he had all the time in the world to do that, and then even, like, that was a solid punish on, um, Dahouse just shooting from all the way across the stage, not really reaching anywhere. Adam and P kind of looking for these hits to get more mana. Dollhouse kind of scrambling to find that kill option while their opponents have 112. In this interaction right here. Okay, so let me go back to here. So we see. No, not here, not here. Yeah, when they get back to stage. So once Gale makes it back down to stage, you know, see the Nair. And in this in this point right here, we see Dollhouse stay like go for the Nair all the way out here. And Gale kind of dashing back and forth on stage. Obviously go for the afterburner kick, and we see like what's supposed to be like the dash attack for the punish. 
but with just enough time after to go into the witch time in front of set with an up smash. Uh, Dollhouse now, you know, with a stock ahead, but still 101. This character is really light. Gayer kind of swinging with a kaboom. And Dollhouse putting themselves in a very dangerous position all the way up there. Just, yeah, going really high up. And then getting caught by that up tilt to finish everything off. I like that Gayer was awaiting the set of the oomph as well. He's taking his, he's absolutely taking their time to not commit it or not like waste the timer on that. And I want to look back at that. Punishing this afterburner kick is going to be really important in this matchup. I think I brought it up earlier, but just shielding that and stopping them in their tracks is going to be really something you kind of need to do um, so they don't get a lot of their combos off. There's that Zapple we talked about before. Now we see Bay like Dollhouse is kind of swinging for the fences, trying to get um, some kind of option going. Likes to stay on that top platform on Battlefield, like kind of when they're they're in disadvantage, not even in, not even in disadvantage, excuse me, but when they're trying to like find uh, somewhere to go back to, kind of when they don't feel like approaching. Like right, I want to go back to that point. Yeah, right here. They went for the Nair, and then they just stayed on this platform for a little while. I think that's interesting. Um, kind of retreating back to here, knowing I feel like full well that even if they're like the disadvantage one percent, typically being above a character isn't somewhere you want to be. Um, especially on Battlefield. Hero can strike you with up air, and if you fall, he can cover that with up tilt, which has a wide range. Um, but of course, I have to go back down, try to cast the landing uh Try to catch that accelerator, that jump forward with the landing fair. And then holding shield for a little too long. We're gonna go ahead and let it rock. Just like that. Setting up the bounce, I think probably just for the flavor. There's not much time it's gonna reflect back except like those small bullets that get let out by some stuff. You probably wanted the flame slash there as well instead of metal slash. But yeah, Dollhouse is having a really difficult time getting in and actually trying to set up any kind of advantage state right now. Because Gay was doing such a solid position and just kind of zoning them out with the tools they have, as well as um, using those melee options to put them in a really good spot. Also, retaining their jump really well. Yeah, throwing out the bang, trying to cover that uh, that ledge option. And this psych up is scary, yeah. So that was a good catch. That was a really good catch from um, from Gao, catching them with the aerial afterburner kick. I guess they thought that if they did get a potato, like psych up is scary. Hero psych up is uh, like absolutely terrifying. So I guess what they were trying to do um, is just get around that, try not to be like like go for like a regular get up option, get caught by dash attack. Um, or they weren't close enough for get up attack to work either. And then you would have probably uh, rolled into the range of this up tilt. So the aerial after burner kick, um, or like that ascending one, was probably their best bet. Still getting caught by the up tilt. Me and Laird must hand some devils on commentary. Alright, here we go. Game two. The switch to Zero Suit. Um, and I believe we're on Town and City in this game. Yeah, okay. So before we get into this one, I want to talk about that. So, this is Battlefield. Er, this is Battlefield. There we go. Battlefield's red, Town and City is blue. Um, and I turned off the camera because this gets a little confusing for me. Like, this is the camera on the stages. So, not Battlefield. So, on Town, this is what we get to see. The ceiling looks like that. And the blast zone is the red outline back here. Um... So then, where are we? Oh my god, Battlefield. So now town is blue, Battlefield's red. Um, they're about the same size. Um, when you look at the stage thing right here, they're about the same size. The le the ledges and stuff are a little different. Um, just kind of like the size and like the bottom. Lengthwise, they're the same, width, not so much. 
Um, and then the platform layout is very different too, so they're so far out. So you'd feel like in this matchup of Zero Suit and Hero, Hero is still a zoner. Um, nothing he's been doing has been crazy, like I'm playing an aggro hero. So really what you can do to get around that, to get around the zaps and the uh, fireballs that he can throw out and try to get away from menu or put pressure on them when they use menu uh, is moving around from platform to platform, using this to your advantage. You can't really camp out on this top platform. Um, you can't really camp out on any of these, maybe these two on the side. Um, but it's not like Battlefield where they can retreat, stay on the top platform, and just kind of try to predict an option uh, from them, trying to get them to approach. Um, instead, just moving around from here to here, that high velocity, the high speed that Zerzud has, is probably going to be very important in this matchup. Um, but the thing is, Dollhouse doesn't necessarily play like that, which is what we're going to see in a minute. Um, we're seeing a lot of dashing back and forth. Um, I also think it's a side note, I think it's kind of funny that Bayo's played Zero Suit or plays Zero Suit. I don't know what it is about these characters. Um, if you know, please tell me, because I don't know if, if it's like they feel similarly or if there's just something about it. Like, I, I have no idea. But yeah, Daha's being very not super mobile with this character. Zero Suit is really fast, really you know movement is your thing and i see like when he when they do like to move they try to use um that near that near flip kick, that flip kick as kind of their main movement option like there's a near flip kick but it's not going to connect right now going to go for another one but this time we're going to go for the up air string instead and again i like that um gay was only using menu oh no the shield break I was going to say, I like that Gayo is only using the menu when they're far enough away where they can't really get punished for it. Like, Zeri wasn't going to connect, Laser wouldn't connect. And the F-Tilt into the Shield Break. Second game in a row where we get a Shield Break. Um, but I feel like Dollhouse is trying to play very conservatively, not really pushing um, for a strong advantage, but instead trying to, like, looking really hard for openings that have to present themselves if you apply pressure. They're like waiting for them to crack. Ooh. I got the chart. Hold on. I got the chart. He was. At, who? They were at what? I don't need to. Okay, so 36, 74, right? Or I guess 21 before that hit. Assuming nothing about this is wrong. Um. Here is percent. Yeah, whack. Was that, a, was that a good? Okay, whack the whack. So in this kind of mid range. So in theory, if you're anywhere between here, there is like a very we'll we'll agree and say there's a very low chance because it goes from 50 to 100. I don't know if that's where things are. I guess that's closer to 100, but I guess not past that. So let's say 50. So there's a 5% chance of that hitting. Like a five to like let's say 15% chance, if I'm reading the chart right, of that not hitting, but killing. The fact that Thwack killed there is the most, like, five-star luck, I think, like, I will ever, like, that was less clean. There we go, down throw to Nair, gonna keep this advantage going, good combos, and then getting caught by that back air from Dollhouse. And now we see them kind of running around, but then immediately back to this very conservative playstyle with Zero Suit. Yeah, and we see, like, again, what I was trying to say before is that Dollhouse isn't applying the pressure to find the cracks, you know? They're kind of waiting for Gao to crack on their own and then do something about it. I, I love that he went for Whack and the Whack, like, consecutively. I love that he got them both. Staying on that platform, getting in a tight position. And definitely keeping your opponent in a tough spot, casting him with a Whack. I don't even want to, what, like... I mean, it's, it's a... That was like a Hail Mary decision, catching their jump with Whack. Like, that was a very interesting spot for you, you to put your opponent in. Um, Alright, well, let's, let's get into game three. I don't have much to say about that. 
back to Bayonetta. Um, I wanted to say this earlier, um, because Dollhouse, you know, this is Loser's Finals. Um, Dollhouse, like, continually would switch colors a lot. I just like that he swap between, or they swap between Bayonetta 1 and Bayonetta 2. Um, I thought that was cool. And then I'm switching back to Bayo 2. And you're running it back to town. Um, we didn't see a lot of flip kicks before. I, what? I need to say that again. And nothing like unbelievable happened, but it's the fact that you set up oomph, and then your opponent opts to not approach as you're the zoner. There's no pressure here, and then you can freely, you get kaboom, and they just walk right into him. Maybe they couldn't react to it in time because of Wi-Fi. There we go, get those classic Bayo combos, or I guess getting a little bit of one. This up out of shields working wonders for um, for Gayo. I didn't realize that, that was such a, a decent, out of, like such a good out of shield option for that character. Yeah, now Dollhouse letting these ABKs rip, trying to do something good, catching it with the up smash, almost landing the hatchet man too. Yeah, these aerial afterburner kicks are starting to work out really well. Cat definitely putting on some pressure from above and making it hard. Was that a spot dodge? It was. Nice. I mean, now we're going to see the XR riddle come out into play. And he hasn't used this. Uh, Gao, like, they haven't used it in a way um, that's been, like, super, like, I'm going to throw you across the stage and then chase you. That was a great call out. Um, from Gao, the down throw, and then knowing that down throw Nair is not going to, down throw Nair, down throw Fair isn't going to connect because they're at 111, they wait for the air dodge, and then just let it happen. Like, it didn't kill or anything, that was just a really good call out. The unfortunate SD from, um, Dollhouse, which, like, has to sting, because you're all the way over there. I think they went for, like, a fast fall in there, because you see them drift back, or up there, you see them drift, like, back into the platform, or into the stage. There's a down throw forward or not going to connect it. He's at 100. Um, but I guess predicting that they're not going to try and go for the um, air dodge again. Or they're not going to want to get caught in the... Oh, yeah. And that that's the thing about Hero when they're off stage like that. If you commit to going so deep. Um, and they have zoom available in their, in their bag of resources. So like that's that's gotta sting. Like that's gotta hurt the fact that you went out so deep. You tried to make the big commitment, only to get caught up by Zoom. And I feel like a lot of the reasons that Dollhouse lost, like, w did stem from the RNG from Hero. You know, Thwack killing the Psychops, um, and Ooms kind of leading the shield breaks. Um, whack killing. The whack killed really early. It's a very, very low chance of that like happening. But um, still, good stuff, both players. Um, this is, I think, gonna end up being like a shorter-ish episode, about 20, 20 minutes. I don't know how long they are usually. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching, and we will catch you guys next week with another great thoughts review. Bye, everybody.